and what shall he do shall prosper. Yeah. Yeah. God is not so, but I uh, like this shift that we can win due credit away. Therefore, the ungodly shall, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the son in the congregation of the righteous. I agree with Pastor Lewis. I didn't do everything right. And I made some mistakes. And if they did something according to not how I raised them, it was not my fault. But I did my best. And, and that, that one thing about Tell them, not only your children, but tell them people to do one thing and then they see you do something else. And so, so therefore, I, I learned one thing in life. If I told them, then I try to walk that walk. That try, if they look at me being a godly man, then I try to live that way. Not just when I came to church. Amen. Not just when I came to church. But when I start to line where they were. Uh, wherever the I may have been, I was still Papa, Granddad. And they knew who I was. When they asked for prayer, they knew who to call. When the children can call you at midnight and say, Papa, pray for me. Well, anything wrong? No, I just want you to pray for me. That tells me that God had been on my side. Were well, they perfect? No. I wish they had listened to everything I said. I wish they had did everything I told them to do. But yes. Yeah, I am so blessed. And I thank God. And, I, and we pray for women for how they raise our children. Well, you know, we got some good men. Amen. We have some good men that, that, uh, uh, that will raise their children. We have some Amen. good men that will sell a little night in that boy in the house by a certain time. We have some good men. And, and I tell the women that if you got a good husband, you got a good uh, 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 boyfriend, well, yeah, pretty nice. He might be worth the while someday. Amen. 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 Yeah, anybody else? I love to pray. I love to pray.
bless you. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you, my father's children. For a joy and a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Another day that the Lord has blessed and kept us, and I'm so delighted about it. And I'm especially happy. I want to say, uh, did you uh, make mention the first time you say Happy Father's Day? And he was probably one that walked through the rest of the day. Don't want to tell him Happy Father's Day. And I was standing there. And, uh, you say, raise your voice and say Hallelujah. My voice is a little weak today, but still I say Hallelujah, and I'm especially thankful. And uh, I'll just go ahead and call her out. Uh, I looked at you. probably saw me looking at my watch there. I saw Maria come in at the church and it wasn't even 11 o'clock. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Here at the fourth time. And even at that, and even at that, I guess another child has decided to grace me with their bless. They bless me by their coming in the house today. I just let them continue to hide right now. Uh, you know, sometimes you can't hide too much, but I'll let them hide. And uh, I won't call their name out right now. But uh, we thank you for them just coming here. I said, Amen. Amen. I'm just delighted today because God has blessed us and brought us a mighty long way. You, you hear my voice right here, right now. And, uh, but, but as the Lord will allow me, I'm just going to continue to praise Him anyhow. Just give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. This is, uh, we celebrate the Father's Day, and uh, Deacon May has already recognized our fathers and our men. Uh, we are also recognizing our youth today for their uh, wonderful achievements. mess. And in the inserts in your program, there's a nice little inserted flyer that uh, is telling about them, and we thank God for them. So we're going to proceed over with the program. We're going to have our announcements coming from uh, Sister Janiah Brown. Amen, amen. Sister Brown is going to come and give us our announcements. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Mother Louis would like to see all the youth following service today. Vacation by will be July 3rd, 5th, and 7th at 7 p.m. We invite you all to attend. Our next weekly meeting will be in person and online on Friday, June 30th, 7 p.m. Asking all members to be present. Men's Day service will be held August 6th at 7 a.m. Residency is the chairperson, he also will be will bring forth the message and Edgecombe County Church Choir will render the music. We encourage every member of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church to support and attend all or as many church functions as possible. We are all one body in Christ and we need all the members of the body working together to keep life strong. Thank you, Mr. Brown, for all the announcements. And at this time, uh, we do uh, share briefly this morning with you, Pastor Street. We thank you, God, for each of you for being here. Just a reminder, our monthly meeting will be uh, uh, June 30th at uh, 7 p.m. We ask that you will come out and be prepared to uh, take care of the business at hand. Uh, we also remind you that uh, The Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School is coming up uh, the week of July the 3rd. Uh, we will have a uh, Bible study on the 3rd. Uh, Bible School on the 3rd, 5th, 6th, 7th. Uh, so we ask that you come out and be a part of that. Uh, Deacon May is in charge of the uh, adults, and uh, uh, Trustee Williams is uh, in charge of the youth. So. They may be contacting our various individuals, but please be prepared to uh, let's work together for our vacation Bible school. Uh, continue to pray one for another. Uh, the Lord has blessed us to be able to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Uh, although my voice may be weak today, although uh, some others may be going through some things, some known and some unknown, but God is good and 
greatly to be praised. I'm so delighted uh, that uh, to have uh, uh, the Pear family with us this morning, my daughter and husband and children. They came in this morning. I just have to be standing in the right position to see them uh, coming to the party. We thank God for them. We thank God for each of you on with this day. And we do say Happy Father's Day to each of you. And let us continue to pray mightily for our fathers. And uh, this morning as we knelt down to pray in our own private clubs, and we say, Lord, touch all fathers. Amen. Touch those that have been fathers as fathers. Touch those who have not been fathers as fathers. But, Lord, help them to live up to the accountability that they should be living up to. And even if the children are not ready to receive them now because they have been absent for so long, help them to continue to force forward. We can't go back and change the past. But one thing we can do, we can move forward and do what God has called us to do. So we thank God for each of you today. Continue to put one for another. Uh, at this time, uh, we are going to have our welcome. Uh, the welcome is coming from uh, Nicholas Carr. Amen. 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 Nicholas, you can go that way. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Our young, our youth are at center stage today. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Anderson Chapel, Mr. Missionary Baptist Church. Happy Father's Day to, to all the fathers. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. We're so delighted to have uh, uh, this choir in place this morning. Uh, we're thankful for our ushers this morning. Give them a hand. Our deacons, give them a hand. Our fathers, give them a hand. Trustees, families and friends, give yourself a hand. We're delighted that you are in the house of the Lord today. One more time, the Lord has blessed us and kept us. And I'm so delighted about it this morning. The choir is going to give us an opening selection at this point in time. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rise to our feet.
approximately a month ago that she came before this body to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And on yesterday, we have the, had the honor and privilege to give her the right to baptism. As Jesus said, baptizing those who shall believe, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And we had the opportunity to do that on yesterday. And I'm just so thankful that she's standing here with her. Uh, her grandmother, who's the uh, mother of the church, uh, and uh, just to be able just to come and just to share in such a tremendous fashion with the Lord. We took her in the water on yesterday, and we had a conversation with her before we took her into the water, as we do always, and uh, and, and just because just because I. I, I, I love just to remind uh, uh, some of our people that uh, we know about them. Uh, so uh, family and friends just love to encourage us. And one of her, <laughs> one of her family told us something. I told her, I said, don't worry about that because if that was the case, uh, that would have happened a long time ago. <laughs> amen, amen. But thank God for for. It's grace and mercy. But seriously, you have embarked on putting the most important journey in your life. That's accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The water baptism was symbolic of you accepting Jesus Christ. When you went under the water, it's symbolic of being and being risen from the water, symbolic of being risen in his new grace and mercy. For he died on the cross. He was buried in the cross. He was buried in the grave. But he got up out of the grave. And when he got up, the resurrection, he gave us new life and new power. And now we have a duty and responsibility to walk according to his word. Now, I don't want to come in here and give anybody out because People say that it's hard to live. Nobody is perfect. It's true. None of them are perfect. But when we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, we desired, we, we, our goal was to walk in the newness of life and to do the best that we can. So we, our goal is to walk after Jesus Christ, to follow him. We got to have that in our mindset. As you stand here today, you can't have a mindset, I'm going to just come to church, show up, and just put on airs. It's got to be in your heart. Amen. It's got to be in your mind. Amen. It's got to be a part of your whole being. Because it's got to be on the inside. Amen. We've got too many people already who are just making a show. But we need to live the life. Amen. And yes, even as we try to live the life, we're going to have struggles. We're going to come up short. But the important thing is to acknowledge that I am a sinner saved by the grace of God. Amen. As you pray each and every day, Lord, help me make it through this day. Lord, forgive me for my transgression. And I promise you that if you have it on the inside, what's on the inside will come out on the outside. Amen. 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 Apologize for some reason that microphone there, uh, the battery must be weak on it. But anyway, and my voice is weak, but it doesn't matter. God knows your heart. Amen. We have here today your certificate of baptism for uh, Sister Latasia Brown, uh, the 17th day of June, Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, uh, Incorporated. 4352 Anderson Chapel Church Road, Macclesfield, North Carolina, given this day, was baptized and was signed by the pastor. And this is your certificate of baptism. I will leave it here in this folder here. We'll give it to you and lay it on that desk there. So that comes up. Your uncle is going to come and going to present to you. Deacon Knight is going to come and present to you a 
Bible. This uh, Bible here will stay in the state of the one that we should have. We do not have a new old chip in the Bible thing just yet, but we will get the Bible for you. But if you would give this to you, and Deacon May will give you a hymn representing it, and they will share with you. Uh, one may be shorter than the other, but they, we pray that they will give you words of encouragement. Truly belongs to the Lord's sake, Jesus Christ, Pastor of this church, Lord the Saints, and praise. And let me give me the honor to present you with this Bible. I have a question for you, though, okay? Uh, if you was going to New York today, and the only thing you had was your phone, how did you get there? Did you get to New York? To New York from here. What would be the first thing you would do when you ponder how to get to New York? You have a phone. To get directions, what would you do? You pray. Would you use your phone? What would you use on your phone? That's right. Map. Use the direction. This Bible. It's the same thing. It's a direction to you. I don't care what you come up with. It's in the Bible. I always heard there's nothing new in the sun. But there's nothing new that you can't find out in this Bible. I don't care what it is. You have a problem with your friends. You have a problem with your mother, your grandmother, your uncle. Any, any type of problem that the world throws your way. This is the direction on how to deal with it. And it tells you that don't care what kind of trouble you get in, you can get out. There's consequences to it, but you can get out. As long as you have this power. And you use it. Don't use it just on Sunday. <laughs> but this is a Monday through Sunday too. And you need it every day. Amen. So we're going to pray for you. And anything that we as the church faith can do for you uh, to help you in any way, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. I, I do the honor to my Lord, Saint Jesus Christ. It is a great privilege to give you this hymn, Lord. I'm not going to talk a lot of your audience. <laughs> but as you said about the Bible, you know, e even when you're going to have a good day or a bad day, there is a hymn in here. You know, I'll be and read your Bible, you can find a hymn that will help you through. And like I said, I thank God for you, and uh, that, that you cannot say, is there anything that we can do? Don't hesitate. Please you ask or let us know. If we can't do it, we'll try to find the best resource to help you. And for that, I said, God bless you, and help us as as possible. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We lay those on the table there likewise because your hand is going to be free to this second. As a pastor of uh, I, I do a pastorship that sometimes that's what gets me. And I'm trying not to do it. As pastor of Anderson Chapel, Missionary Baptist Church, we do welcome you to this body to all rights and privileges of a member of Anderson Chapel. Amen. You have a right to work with the choir, you have a right to work with the ushers, you have a right to, to sing, pray, and shout whatever the Lord is on the heart. But whatever he does lay on the heart, whatever you do, make sure that it comes from the Lord. Amen. If you give him the glory and honor and praise, he said that I would never leave you nor forsake you. His promises are true. So as pastor, I give you the right hand of fellowship. Welcome you to this body. Thank you. So allow we also give you a hug. Amen. Yes. Yes. God bless you. We're going to, the body is going to give you, come and give you the right hand of fellowship. We're going to have the deacons to come, the mothers, the ministers, the choir, and then we're going to have 
That's this side of the body to come, and then this side in that order. Amen. Amen. Come on, deacons. Across the front, 
We got a nice little lively crowd up here today. Amen. Amen. So to our visitors, welcome. But um, in the program, I did make some mistakes, but nevertheless, we're going to get it right. Um, and I did include the youth that do participate a lot with Emerson. So the first certificate will be presented to J.C. Jones um, just for his participation here at Emerson. Amen. Amen. So those that are going to kindergarten, um, our first certificate would be um, for Sister Delia Dupree. Brother Jada Jones. <laughs> Brother Joshua Green.
energy I need right now. <laughs> prayer is always in the order, you know. One of the things I all time say, you probably don't know as much about it, particularly the other ones, when we talk about taking prayer out of school. See, there used to be a time where school days started every day for us with prayer. And we would read the Bible, we would start with prayer, and we even uh, uh, pledge allegiance to the flag. But those days have passed, but prayer is always in order. And I still say, as long as you have prayer in your heart, and you know the words of prayer, they may have taken institutionalized prayer out of school, but they can never take prayer out of school. But we want to just offer a word of prayer for you right now that the Lord will continue to strengthen and encourage. Amen. Father God again, Father God, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, if we look at your peoples, where are your words that some of the children of God have come to me? For mm -hmm. such is the kingdom of God. My Lord. Oh Father God, they are very young children. Mm -hmm. They are going to bear graves, who will bear promotions, some going to heart, some being to come out of heart. Some they could be to care of God. I may be in the great grave. Yes. But even Father God in the great grave, children face it. But they don't see me. Yes, Lord. Even Jack, this year in the great grave, the sick year old, she petitioned. The Father God, we could read that in the name of Lord. In the name of Jesus. We ask for you not know each and every one of these children mm -hmm. that report today. Mm -hmm. Not just them, but children all over the world. We ask you, Father God, to touch their heart, their lives, every morning yes. when they arrive to school, every day yes. uh, when they come home. Even when they are alone, Father God, we ask for you to, we ask you to strengthen them and continue to be in the home. We pray and thank you, Father God, for having that need to check the home. So you need to have a desire to come. So, Father God, we ask you to strengthen them. We ask you to bring your parents to rest them. Go ahead and get them prepared for the day, Lord. And Father God, for the evening situation, we ask you, Father God, for the energy all around them. Yes. Protect them, Father God. Guide them. Mm -hmm. And teach them. To guide us. And teach them to be able to give, be a lack before them. But Father God, so wherever they go, that they might be a prophet. Mm -hmm. They're not the children of tomorrow, but they are the children of today. Mm -hmm. So we ask for them in the name of Jesus.
So this is a Father's Day certificate to each of the men. And um, according to your role here at Anderson, um, it's just something short, just to say thank you. I also asked the men what was their favorite drinks and their favorite snacks. Um, <laughs> so you'll be surprised when someone say. But now we understand why someone loves fall. But, um, <laughs> but um, nevertheless, um, this is just a small token for us um, just to say thank you. So the first one we have is Brother Dennis Former. Brother Winston, um, Brother Robert Winston. <laughs> Brother Winston, I didn't have your number, but if you let me know your snack and your favorite drink, you'll get it the next time. Deacon J. May. Deacon James Knight. Deacon David Brink. Brother Dancy. So obviously I'm missing some certificates. <laughs> And it will happen to be my dad. Oh, here we go. Deacon Ray Bay. Um, this one is Brother um, Patrick. I didn't get his favorite drink, but I got the next. Some things can't be recorded, Pastor. And this is for Brother Pat. So, Pastor, I know you wonder why you didn't sign a certificate for yourself, but we wanted to honor you today. And it says, to our pastor, in infinite wisdom, the Lord surely knew that we would need a pastor as faithful as you. A love of, God, a love of God's word and a heart for his flock you give and of yourself and you stand on the rock. We appreciate you. <laughs> so this is just a small appreciation from Anderson to all the men. And my sister, um, Brooklyn, is going to come and give us a solo. Deacon um, May made, made a very important, important uh, statement. And I'm going to ask uh, Mother Dupree if you will offer a prayer for all these males. Please offer a prayer for us. Pray <laughs> 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 All right. Man, wherever y'all should stand, as Mother Decree may offer a prayer for us. Thank you. Thank you. Father, if we had a tree and tree, 
We couldn't thank you enough. Oh, we thank you for your only begotten son, mm -hmm. Jesus, who died on the cross. And he rose the third day yes. with all power yes. in his hands. Yes. And that we send a mighty will. Mm -hmm. And Father, we just want to thank you for mm -hmm. life, health, and strength. Mm -hmm. And Father, we thank you for being in this these programs and things. We thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Yes. We thank you for loving us better than we loved ourselves. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father. Thank you. We need your help to go through. We all are standing in the need of the yes. We just thank you, Father. Thank, thank you for Father. everything because thank you are everything to us. Yes. This is my prayer. In your servant Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
you only take up one offering. Offering in charge.
Maybe you stand for a brother or sister. Maybe you stand for that relationship that just can't seem to get right. But through it all, we know that God is in the midst. And he's working it out today. And we just come this morning. For men ought to always pray. And thank God. So as the choir should give us a selection of their shows, we invite you to come. Come on, choir, give us a song. Say, not so, Lord, I'm living in the pain of faith. 
and we're thanking you, Lord, for bringing us through that. This, and we thank you for bringing us through that. Father, some, dear Lord, our children, dear Lord, are struggling. They are struggling, dear Lord, with the relationship problems. They are struggling, dear Lord, with those that are talking about them. They are struggling with those, dear Lord, who turn their backs on them. But Father God, I'm reminded this morning in your word that you said that I would never leave you nor forsake you. So when all the world may turn their backs upon us, dear Lord, we're going to hold on to your hand. And Father God is holding on to your unchanging hand, dear Lord. We always have that door open, dear Lord. Father God, that we may reconcile with our brother, with our sister, with our neighbor, with our friend, dear Lord. Father God, that we may live in the harmony, dear Lord, that you have called us to live in. So Father God, right now, dear Lord, we thank you. Father, bless the medical professionals, those doctors, those nurses, dear Lord, those caregivers that wash over our loved ones. Those facilities, dear Lord, the hospitals, the nursing home, the rehabilitation center, wherever they may be, dear Lord. Father God, just bless them right now. Father God, we pray, dear Lord, for our fathers all across this land, dear Lord. Father God, we have fathers, dear Lord, that have been in the child's life from day one. We have fathers, dear Lord, that have been there in day one, dear Lord, and turned away. We have fathers, dear Lord, that turned away from day one. But Father God, whatever the need right now, Father God, I ask you to touch the Lord. The heart's mind of every male, the Lord, every father, the Lord. Father God, that they will renew that relationship with their children. Father God, that they may understand, the Lord. Father God, it is a blessing, the Lord, to have children. It is a blessing to have a seed, the Lord, that we can raise up. Father God, and in that blessing, dear Lord, we ought to love one another. So, Father God, we ought to care for one another. Thank you, Lord. Father God, there is no court in the land that ought to be able, that ought to have to enforce any father to support their child. There is no court in the land, dear Lord, that should have to enforce that any father, dear Lord, love their children. Father God, for if we could, if we had a part, dear Lord, it created that life. We ought to do our best to give them the best life that we can. But Father God, no matter what, dear Lord, help us as fathers to love, to have the love of God in our heart. For God, for love, we cannot love one another without the love of God in our heart. So Father, on this Father's Day, we lift up, dear Lord, every Father. We lift up those who are serving as fathers, who are standing at the stand, Father. Father, that we work together, dear Lord, to raise up the children, dear Lord. Father God, that they may understand, dear Lord. Father God, that we are all sinners saved by the grace of God. And Father God, to help us to share the word of God in season and out of season. Father, go with them, all parents. Go with the grandparents. Go with the church family. Dear Lord, that we will be supported in the lives of the children, dear Lord. Father God, that we may share with them that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Father, we thank you for all that you have done, what you are doing, and what you continue to do. In the mighty, master's name of Jesus in Christ, we say amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Come through without you. Lord, Lord, am I Sunday morning, so she is prepared this morning. She's been very busy, as I see, with everything else that's been going on. 
but I believe and I know somewhere along the way she took the ample time out to prepare a word from the Lord. So this time, after the choir should give us a selection of their show, the next voice will be that of our very own minister in the other house. And Jesus, when he was baptized, 
went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Heavenly Father, we come, O oh God, just asking you, O oh God, to remove from me, O oh God, and allow me to be a vessel, O oh God, that will bring forth your word, O oh God, for your people on this morning, O oh God. O oh God, we ask, O oh God, that ears can hear, O oh God, and that the word they will be able to abide in. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And if you go, if you travel back with me to verse 17. And it says, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The topic for today, when my father show up. Many times when we look at these verses, it's preached in reference about the significance of Jesus' baptism. But today being Father's Day, I want us to focus on that, that verse. And this um, insert, this is my beloved son. Yeah. Something happens when a father shows up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know about you, but when my father show up to different things that I have, it really makes me happy. Yeah. As we know, my father is not a man of many words, but I know that he's going to always show up and support me if no one else will. Yeah. I know that he'll correct me. I know that he will pray for me. So I thank God for that relationship. But something different happens when my Heavenly Father show up. Mm, It makes a difference. He changes the whole atmosphere. See, God has given us some relationships that we can change. And some of relationships we can't change, like our parents. And so some others will say, oh, I'm a father too because I had to step up. Our month was last month. Today I'm going to speak to the men, the fathers. I thank God for the relationship my father and I have. And when I was preparing my sermon, God allowed me to understand this a little more personal. See, many would say it was the conception of me that made him a father. But God allowed him to be a father before I was even conceived. When he be, when he um, dated my mom, he became a father again because she already had my sister. And so there was a love there that made things a little different. And so I want to talk to the fathers and not just the baby dad. See, a father is always active in their child's life. And that child can depend on that father to show up. But a baby daddy is invited to important events. And sometimes won't even show up. A father is active in his child's life, whether he was part of creation or he stepped up, but he's active. While the baby daddy is over complaining because the man who stepped up to be active and he's concerned about who that woman is with now, rather than the welfare of his child. Women, some of this is your fault because some of you are messy. Some of you use your children as pawns to make it seem like he's a deadbeat. But it was your actions that made him question whether or not this baby was his or not. But men, even if she stepped out, it's your responsibility to find out if it's your baby or not. Because that's what a real man would do. He wants to be active in his child's life. But not one time did God complain in this scripture about Joseph stepping up, being married to Mary, because that was part of his plan. Well. But because Jesus is his is his child, and he was his father, he showed up and made his presence known. God had something to say. I don't know about you, but when God showed up for me, my whole life changed. God has been good to me. And when I count my blessings, and as the hymn will say, and I name them one by one, I could tell you a lot of things that God has done for me. It could have been times that I could have lost my mind. There was times that depression was taking over, but God stepped in. There was a time when the doctor gave up on me, but God stepped in. Mm. He has been my Jehovah Rapha. 
Alpha. He has been my Jehovah Jireh. He has been my help in the time of trouble. He has been so good to me. And when I look back over my life and I think things over, I just thank God for the doors that he opened, the doors that he closed, the relationships, the businesses that he blessed me with, but most of all, the favor he had on my life. I'm thankful for him being present in my life. One of the biggest blessings God has blessed me with was being a mother. So men, as a father, or a father figure in someone's life, God has trusted you to be that father, to be that blessing. He trusted you to be present in your child's life. And that brings me to my first point. You must be present to be a father. Many your presence is needed in your children's lives. The Bible gives you instructions on how to be a father and how to be a man of God. One, you should lead your children in a Christian, um, in a you should lead your children in a Christian life. You should engage with your children, and in order to engage with them, you must be present. You have a responsibility that cannot be ignored or passed off. You have a role as a father, as a dad. And whether you know it or not, your children will mimic your behaviors and your attitudes. So my question to you is, when they mimic you, is it in a godly standard? Are you setting the right example for them to follow? Are you showing them how to lead as the head of your house? Do they see you praying for your family? Do they see you as that leader? Do they see you as that protector? Do they see you as that provider? Does your presence in their life make them feel loved? So you could be there, but it don't mean that you're being involved. Do they see you going into your secret closet to study the word of God? Do they see you slipping away for some peace and quiet so you can have time with God? Can they say because of your presence in the home, you have trained them according to Proverbs 22 and 6. And this is train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from you. In order to train him, Daddy, you have to be present. Yeah. See, conceiving a child may be easy to some, but fathering a child is a whole different other child. Wow. Parenting don't come with instructions or manuals to read. It's a learn as you go. But the most important aspect of being a parent and doing a godly assignment is to present God into your children's life. Yes. Being present, you will learn the traits of your children. And they may get on your nerves, mm. but your presence allows them to get on your nerves. Mm. Just imagine if you had a perfect child like Jesus Christ. Mm. Even though he was perfect, his father still knew that his presence was needed. Mm. Let me take you to the Jordan River at Jesus' baptism. Well. My Bible tells me that it's been recorded in Mark, Matthew, and Luke. It doesn't go in detail who was there. We don't know if Mary was there, Joseph was there, who was there. But one thing we do know, his father was there. Well. Being a godly father for your son or your daughter, you must be present. But you also must show up. Well. See, God showed up, and not only did he show up, but he made his presence known. And he had something to say. So, during this time, Jesus was in human form to complete the task of his father. And for 400 years, God was silent. On your free time, you could go back to Malachi and, and, and read the declaration of Jesus coming. But for 400 years, God did not speak. Even a matter of fact, when Mary was going to conceive Jesus, God sent an angel <coughs> He didn't even do it his sin. Well. To let her know that she was going to be with the child. Oh, yeah. But at the Jordan River, where his only begotten son, his beloved son, is about to be baptized, well. he showed up and had something to say. Well. You want to know why I said I will always show up and have something to say when it involves my child? This is Jesus, God talking to me. Because it was his child. How many men in here show up when it involves your child and your children? Amen. God showed up and didn't do it because he was bitter. He didn't do it to use the excuse Barry was married. 
He didn't give the second hand. He showed up. Because that's what real men do. What made this is intriguing to me, when we come into the house of the Lord, we pray and invite the Holy Spirit in. So we expect God to show up then. But, nowhere did I read that they prayed before his baptism. But, God still showed up. Which brings me to my second point. Father, show your children their possibilities and encourage and acknowledge them. As a good father, you need to show your children their possibilities and encourage them along the way. You must speak life into your children. Because if you don't, nobody else will. Acknowledge who they are to you. See, God shows up and acknowledges that Jesus is his beloved son. He acknowledged that he was the son of God. Even when the angel came to Mary, he told her, people will call your baby the son of God. And John 1, the prophet version of Jesus, and says, you are the son of God. In Matthew 16, in Caesarea Philippi, and Jesus asked Peter, who do they say I am? And Peter answered, Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Even on the cross, the centurions say in Matthew 27 and 54, surely he was the son of God. But before any of them knew who Jesus was, and he spoke in his son's life because he knew his possibility. As a man, as a parent, you should be able to stand up and say, I know who my son is. I know who my daughter is. It shouldn't take someone else to fill you in on who your child is who your child is, what their successes are, because your presence is needed to see and know your child's possibilities. God acknowledged who his son is because he knew the enemy would try to tempt him, even in the next chapter of his life. After the Jordan comes the wilderness, and he, he was, Jesus was going to have to stand by himself. And the very first thing that the enemy said to him, if you are the son of God, See, the devil wanted to test Jesus' knowledge of who he was. But if I could paraphrase right here, Jesus had to let him know. Look, I know your game. I know what you're trying to do. But my father was present in my life. My father already told me who I am. My father already told me my possibilities. My father already told me that it was going to be a slick joker like you. Men, this is why your presence is important in your children's life. I'm teaching them their possibilities and who they are. So when Joe Blow show up, it don't easy entice her. Because you already told your daughter that she's cute. She don't need him. You already showed your son how to make money, how to be a leader, how to be a protector, so the streets won't get him. Hmm. You already taught them how to make their own money. So nobody else can just swindle them any kind of way. Your son ain't trying to be this scrub and live off women for free. He makes his own money, got his own crib. But fathers, keep teaching them their possibilities. Teaching them to work. Teaching them that faith will not work is there. So when the enemy sends his tactics, they can rise and stand firm. Because they know who they are and who they are. Before the enemy can challenge who they are, your chi- who your children are, because you have told them their possibilities. They'll know how to go down on their knees and fight their battles. They'll know how to stand firm upon the word of God. They'll know how to worship because this is what you have taught them. And when it's time to tell their testimony, you as a father can be so proud of them. Which brings me to point three. You will let them know how proud you are of them. Let your children know that you are proud of them. God in in Mark 1, Matthew 3, and Luke 3, let Jesus know how proud of him he is. In Matthew 3, it was a public announcement. In Luke 3, it was a personal conversation. And some may ask, why is he proud? It wasn't like he raised the dead, healed the sick, um, had the lame to walk, healed in the leprosy, or anything. But God still wanted him to know that he was pleased with him. Well, God didn't attach his proud to what Jesus could do. He attached his proud to him because he was his son and that well, was enough. Yeah. Fathers, let your children know when you're proud of them. 
Also let them know when you're disappointed. It doesn't have to be a public declaration. It could be a private conversation. Yeah. Some things happen when a father looks at their child and says, I am proud of you. Well, Those words can help a child to decide yeah. to stay focused. Well, Something happens when a father is present. Yeah. He shows a child their possibilities and let them know he is proud of them. Yeah. In my closing, man, as a father, your children need you to be yeah. present. Yeah. They need you to be involved. Well, they need you to be engaged. Yeah. You need to teach your children the possibilities that lie within them. Yeah. Acknowledge who they are. Yeah. Set the example for them. Pray for them. Pray over them. Yeah. And allow them to see you lead, protect, and provide for your family. Yeah. Allow your presence to be known. Even in our mess, God has always been there for us. Yeah. Thank you. 
that shit. Uh, I just wanted to remind everyone, tell others that don't know that, and, and to encourage everyone to participate in the Juneteenth celebration. Juneteenth is an important um, time for us as black people. Uh, it's the time when slavery um, was abolished, and all across the country, there's different celebrations going on to honor that occasion. I do want to let you know that in Rocky Mount, that they are having several gospel artists at their Juneteenth celebration to include Hezekiah Walker uh, this afternoon, Luther Barnes, and several other um, uh, gospel artists. So just wanted to encourage you to go out and participate in this free celebration that honors our people and our freedom from slavery. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Juneteenth celebration over in Rocky Mount this afternoon. And thank you for that because I had a uh, hand of fire there, but did not have it with me. And God bless you. Let's encourage one another. Uh, and remember to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Again, let us not forget uh, our vacation Bible school coming up uh, July 3rd, 5th, 6th, 7th. So let us. Uh, be a part of that, and we begin at, uh, I think we say 6.30, we say 6.30, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, vacation Bible school, 7 o'clock, <laughs> okay, 7 o'clock, amen, God bless you, God bless you, if there's nothing else, that's why I shout. <laughs> Lord, 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 I want you to help me. I can't make this by myself. Help me. Help me. I want you to help me on my journey. Help me on my way. Amen. 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 Amen.